Ciao YouTube, Norman Duke here. This is a Belfi Free gameplay video in which I'm gonna use the current new gun, the MP7. That's right. The MP7 is currently considered one of the worst noob guns ever. It's a gun that you unlock in comparative mode. It's, I believe, the second or third gun you unlock in that mode. And uh, I just recently unlocked it. Uh, and to sum up the one of the main points of this video is I don't really found it overpowered at all. I mean, almost everybody out there say if you're gonna use the MP7, especially if you're gonna make lots of kills with MP7, you're gonna get floated in chat with messages like MP7 noob, learn to play, etc., etc., etc. Seems almost like a Call of Duty match, really. And um, the thing is, this gun isn't really that overpowered. The main asset of this gun is the rate of fire. It's got a rate of fire which is around uh, 950 rounds per minute. It has a base damage of 20 and a lowest damage of uh, slightly more than 11. All the stats, by the way, come from Simtech. It's an excellent site which shows you all the stats for battlefield free weapons. Uh, I put a link in the description. Check it out, it's amazing. Anyway. Many people consider this gun, let's say, dishonorable. Because playing with the MP7 is easy, you shouldn't do it, uh, it's a new gun, etc, etc. Now, the thing is, 900%, 950 rounds per minute is slightly more than the rate of fire of weapons like the AAK, which is the assault rifle pretty much everybody uses in team deathmatch and squad deathmatch uh, if you're using an assault rifle. Other guys use the S-Val, which is the, um, no, sorry, not the S-Val, that's a submachine gun. I mean the, um, the G3, which is another weapon you unlock for cooperative mode, which is probably kind of a new weapon because it's accurate, deals a hell of a lot of damage, etc, etc. So, about the MP7. Now, the MP7 has a couple of advantages. First of all, it has to be used with extended magazines. Unless, you, until you unlock the extended magazines, uh, this gun is kind of useless because it has a basic round capacity of 21, and uh, without extending magazine, those 21 rounds are gonna go away really, really quickly, and you're gonna be left reloading against uh, against the enemy who's not reloading, especially against assault rifles, carbines. If you don't kill somebody, or if you kill them and they have a friend behind them, you're pretty much gonna die with the MP7 because there's not much you can do really. So, it is a good gun. It is definitely a good gun. As you can see, it's really accurate. The vertical recoil is pretty low. The spread of the shot is kinda high. The horizontal spread, I mean. But, it's manageable. I mean,. You can shoot pretty easy on short and medium distance. Of course, it's not as good on medium distance as an assault rifle. It requires lots and lots of shots to kill, and um, it's simply not that accurate. But uh, it's nice. I mean, team deathmatch is a very good weapon. I wouldn't use it in a conquest or any larger map, really. But as it stands, it is a good gun. Now. Another problem with the MP7, like many other weapons, is that if you're too good with it and you don't die for a long time, you basically run out of bullets, which is the exact thing that's happening to me in this moment. I don't have many bullets left, and so I switch to my handgun, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm not really going to do anything good with my handgun, because it's, um, I mean, it's good at very, very close range, but against uh, automatic weapons, it stands no chance. But if you play with support, you don't have this problem. Because you just give ammo to yourself. However, playing, I prefer to play with assault because I can deploy the medic hit. So if I'm wounded, uh, I can just uh, dive down uh, undercover and uh, throw my medic hit and then be full health, uh, get out, engage, etc. Which some people might consider a noob tactic, uh, but we have get a weird grenade throw here. Uh, probably because these windows are or are still up. And uh, 
again, this is another strategy, or another tactic, more correctly, that some people find lame. I mean, you're getting shot, you're diving to cover, you throw the medicate, you're good as new. Uh, well, apart from, from the medicate part, this is exactly what happens in real life. When soldiers get shot, they're under fire, the first thing they do is dive into cover. Search cover so they don't get killed by the enemy shooting them. And, uh, speaking of uh, honorable behavior, how honorable it is to hide on a, on, a on a container and camp there, or as the opponent team is gonna do, which, which ultimately cost us the match in this round, camp your snipers on the rooftop. Or base rape, like uh, some guy is gonna do in this battle. He's basically gonna get into the warehouse in which we spawn and kill us when we spawn. I mean, which is absolutely honorable, right? Much more honorable than using the dreaded MP7. Which again, admittedly, is a good gun, but thank you, friend, for saving my life. It's not so much better other weapons like the AAK uh, or. I mean, the UMP 45 is a decent submachine gun, too. And also P90, uh, the PP19. But all good guns. The MP7 is a good gun, too. But it's just it's specialized too. I mean, you're not gonna gonna get a, a long range of the MP7. You're not gonna uh, well, <laughs> it is a pretty good gun. <laughs> I'll be honest, but it's not really a noob gun. It's just a very good gun. I mean, there are uh, so many other weapons in this game. That you can play against a guy with the MP7, and you won't actually be disadvantaged. For example, again, P90, PP19, they all have more rounds, they're all more accurate, especially at long range. With the Nasval, you can get a higher minimum damage, which is 18 instead of 11. So, it's not really so much uh, overpowered. <laughs> it's good, it's a pretty good gun. I, I like to use it, I love it. But it's not like the best gun in the world or even noob gun everybody seems to think it is. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video will probably be a Battlefield 3 video too. Uh, I don't know if I'll be making more Total War commentaries. Probably the answer is yes. But in this period, I don't really feel like playing Total War. I tried to play a couple games of uh, uh, Fall of Samurai, and they were so boring. I got completely destroyed, but it wasn't that. It was more like the fact that I, you know, really was in the mood. I, well, I didn't want to micromanage. I didn't want to... Uh, choose uh, the most overpowered unit for the current map I you know once one of the matches I actually lost simply because again I maneuvered my cavalry badly and uh, so my opponent destroyed it and then mowed down my troops because there's no square formation in Fall of the Samurai another battle I simply lost because the opponent brought more cavalry and better and my cavalry got completely destroyed, and then again, the infantry got wiped out. Uh, in fact, I'm getting kind of tired of the fact that cavalry is so effective in uh, Fall of the Sea. I may go back to Napoleon, actually, or to Shogun 2. Because, frankly, I can't really stand a game in which. Uh, set in a period in which cavalry should actually be at one of, the, one of its lowest points in history, because. With uh, accurate rifles, bayonets, etc., cavalry should be pretty much relegated to mountain infantry, which is uh, guys with guns uh, that happen to be able to ride. But no, melee cavalry in Fall of the Same Ray is amazingly powerful, and if you don't counter cavalry in Fall of the Same Ray, basically you've lost. Which was. which made sense in Vanilla Shogun 2. But uh, in 
full of scenery in my opinion is not really that fun. So anyway, again I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Ciao ragazzi!